Hi guys, today I'm going to review the Dell Venue 11 Pro 7000 series 7140 to be precise. It is a 10.8 inch Windows 8.1 tablet with the brand new Intel Core M. I already reviewed last year's model with the Atom version and also with the i5 Y series version. I wasn't the biggest fan of the i5 version because it had quite some performance issues, but I really really liked the Atom version. What about this year's model? It is a little bit lighter, a bit more compact and still powerful and very versatile. And before I'm going to start with the actual review, I just wanted to mention I will also do a separate review about all the accessories just so you know that I won't include it in this video so it won't be any longer than it has to be just so you know what will be in there. There is a desktop dock, a keyboard dock with an included battery, a back cover, a smart cover and a keyboard cover so you know what to expect there but let's continue with the review let's damn it let's start with the design and build quality and start off with the ports and buttons first on the left hand side we have the headphone jack volume rocker microphone one of the two stereo speakers micro usb micro hdmi usb 3.0 on the bottom we have the mechanism and the dock for the available covers and the accessories. Here we have on the right side the Kensington lock, the second stereo speaker, micro SD card slot and the power button. On the back we can see the camera and here's the one on the front. As for the device itself with 720 grams it is lighter than last year's model but still a little bit on the heavy side. It's not really too thick but also not the thinnest one. But therefore we have quite nice rounded edges and overall it feels good in the hand. What I really don't like is this flimsy back. Once I took it off, I saw a copper heatsink on this place where the device also gets a little bit warm. Otherwise the material is nice, but the way it attaches isn't good because we have noses here and one or two already were broken on my review unit. And I think I broke one too, because you can see here, it doesn't attach properly anymore here. So this one is done. I can only recommend you never to open this back. If you are okay as it is because the battery isn't removable as it was on last year's model. So never do it and you won't have this issue because you can already see here there is a little bit flex and you will hear it squeak and squeak. And if you maybe never open the device, I think a few reviewers did already, you won't have this issue because it makes the device feel cheaper than it is. If it sticks properly to the device, it feels good. It is quite okay in terms of size for what we get, but take in mind, it is not the most solid built one. Otherwise, I'm completely fine. The bezels here are okay, I would say. They give you room enough to hold on to, and the overall design is nice. That's all I can say for right now. We have a 10.8 inch 1080p IPS display with an aspect ratio of 16 by 9. Personally, I prefer 16 by 10 on such a device, but it doesn't change the fact everything looks really sharp. And with a scaling of 125%, also everything looks quite right in terms of the resolution and so on. If you check the brightness, the lowest setting for a few people at night could still be a little bit too bright. Not really an issue for me because I like brighter screens, but the great thing here is the maximum brightness, which is still okay for sunlight if you don't mind the glare so much. Otherwise, white's practically perfect, nothing to add here. The white balance is accurate, really where I want it to be and really pleasant to look at it for hours. As for the blacks, really solid, really deep. They don't lose any details, but not quite on the Dell level I'm usually used to. Otherwise, colors are what I'm used to anyways, because really bright, really vibrant, really vivid, not dull, washed out or anything, really nice to look at. Also, if you check the viewing angles, absolutely solid you lose a little bit of brightness and contrast but that's normal the only things i maybe should mention that are maybe not that great are two issues i can't really show off on camera but i can really tell you just real quick about it the one thing is if you are watching videos videos look a little bit more grainy and noisy as i'm usually used to especially on dell devices which usually have amazing video qualities it's a really small thing and not really noticeable on a normal viewing distance, but still should be mentioned. The other thing is a contrast issue, because if you are in a really deep, dark screen with lots of blacks, the contrast gets boosted. And when you then jump into something really bright and light, you will notice everything looks a bit overexposed and over contrasted. And this takes a few seconds to get down to normal, like maybe five or six seconds, and then everything is fine. But if you jump from bright to dark all the time, it could be a bit annoying. But still, 
Besides all that, it is pretty much the best 10 inch Windows display you can get. I said this last year on the Dell Venue 11 Pro and I'm saying this still, we have these small little issues, these two, but it doesn't change the fact the display after all is still absolutely great. We did check the display, now let's check the speakers. The microphone is up here, so let's start with the demo. Hey guys, this is Jamar Bois with the Damn Jam Podcast. And this is episode 3, Apps, Apps, Apps. This week, Demir and I are going to discuss our favorite apps and why we love them. And we won't just talk about one platform. We're going to cover iOS, Android, PC. Okay, so what are my thoughts about it? I used Max Audio this time because last time on the Latitude it didn't work out, but I would definitely recommend to use Max Audio on the Venue 11 Pro because it does boost the sound, it does improve the sound because otherwise the maximum volume wasn't that great. But with Max Audio on, maximum volume was really good. Absolutely fine, nothing to complain. I never even used 100% most of the time. There is a hint of bass, which is quite nice. Mids are also quite nicely balanced and the highs are quite clear. But from time to time, they tend to distort a little bit with Max Audio on and a bit of a maybe unusual preset. But otherwise, I am still completely happy as I was last year with the last year's speakers. They are still loud, clear, provide a nice stereo effect and quite nice balanced sound in overall. So I can't really complain anything at all. I wouldn't say it is as spectacular as it was last year because the competition catched up, but it is still a really great speaker after all. Let's get to the performance and starting off with the SSD speeds, I got about 370 megabytes per second in read speeds and 200 megabytes per second in write speeds. Not the most extreme high end specs but still very good and for what this device has to deliver more than just okay. Otherwise we have the Core M5Y10 and what it is capable to I want to just show you off real quick. If you check modern UI apps I don't really think I have to even show it but they were extremely buttery smooth. Same goes for the rendering in PDFs. As you can see, super smooth, super fast, absolutely great. If we now check the browsing performance, Internet Explorer is still my benchmark in terms of smoothness and rendering on a Windows tablet. As you can see, this works perfectly nice. If you go into Chrome and check that, also very smooth, not as smooth and not as fast, especially the rendering times as Internet Explorer, but still fine no matter what you use. If you check Opera, which I quite like usually, as you can see, almost on Internet Explorer level most of the times. But as you can see here, here it can't really compete because I noticed there are things where it is as fast as Internet Explorer and then where it's somewhere in between Chrome and Firefox. So maybe not the best resolution or solution after all, but still quite nice. Otherwise, video editing worked quite nice. The final rendering took a little bit longer, but as I said already on the Dell Attitude, the normal daily life workflow on this device is practically pretty much the same as on an i5 U-series CPU. Like for example the Surface Pro 3, you won't really see that much difference unless you do the really heavy tasks. We have 4GB of RAM here, there is an 8GB version, which should be a bit more future-proof, but for most of the things I did so far, 4GB were quite nice tabs, a lot of things open and apps and so on was quite nice. One thing that is a little bit annoying is the RAM management on modern UI apps because those apps get closed way too often, way too early and once you enter them again they reload all the time. This is a bit annoying but not an issue of the device. This is a Microsoft RAM management thing in modern UI apps but otherwise I have to say the Core M still does a more than convincing job for a tablet. If you want the highest performance ultra machine you maybe need a more powerful ultra book but for what I see here I'm absolutely fine with the performance. Let's talk about battery life, heat and noise now and the best part here is the noise because the device is 100% silent all the time there is no fan and there are no moving parts so absolutely great. In terms of the heat the only spot where it gets warm is about here where the heat sink is and it does get noticeably warm and the warmer the longer you use it but it didn't get so warm that I would have any concerns about it not at all and if there's any thermal throttling going on at least I didn't notice anything of it in my usual daily workflow. Maybe I did get it to throttle but like I said I didn't notice anything of it so I'm fine with that. As for the battery life a full charge needs three hours, one hour gets you to about 50% and how long does it hold up? 
I got everything from about three to five hours with an average of four to four and a half hours with normal use. Three hours was with heavier use definitely and with lower use you can get about five hours. If that's not enough for you, I can highly recommend you to try the keyboard dock with an internal battery because it will give you about two to three hours of additional use. I would say two to two and a half is realistic. So it, as a combo you can get about five to eight hours, I would say in average, seven hours of daily use. That should be good enough for most of the days. And if it isn't, then you maybe need an additional battery pack or something like that, but I think it should be fine. So all I can say, the battery life itself for the tablet with four, four and a half hours isn't that great, but for the performance you get, it is still acceptable, it is okay. Noise, absolutely perfect, and heat is still totally fine. Next thing in line to talk about would be software and bugs. And I can make this really fast because we are running Windows 8.1 with all its pros and cons, nothing really otherwise. We have the usual Dell apps. They can be uninstalled if you don't like them. Otherwise it was fine. It was stable. Yes, I had one freeze, but I would say one freeze is no freeze. So don't concern about that. Otherwise quite fine, quite stable. All the things work like they should have. The only one thing I have to talk about a little bit is the stylus. I won't really show it off because that's for the accessory review I will also do. But all I can say you it worked precise, it worked fine. But the only thing I noticed you had to put a little bit more pressure on the screen for it to get recognized. That was a little bit annoying because it was more pressure than I was used to. But once you are used to this little bit more pressure it worked fine and nothing to say otherwise. So software bugs all fine. By now we know the device is very good, but is it worth the money? And I have to say I'm not entirely sure yet. Because of two things, we don't know the final street price yet. I would expect something at about $800 for this model. But the other thing is the competition in this convertible sector is really, really high. We have Microsoft with the Microsoft Surface Pro 3. We have Asus, we have Acer, we have Lenovo and so on. And those all deliver very premium convertibles. But one thing that this device has going for it are the first party accessories. We have this really great dock which makes it a really great ultrabook convertible here with an additional battery. Still small and compact, a little bit on the heavy side but still very versatile. We also get the dock and all the other stuffs. We have the stylus which isn't an usual thing you get on any device. It costs extra but definitely this all makes it one of the most versatile devices out there on the market right now. I think it's time for the recap. So let's start with the design and build quality. In terms of the design, it is nice. The bezels are nice. Port placement is logical. You have all the necessary ports, which is nice. The build quality is not that great, especially the flimsy back. Yeah, not that great. Otherwise, display, absolutely fantastic, bright, sharp, just pleasant to look at. And I'm still saying it is one of the best you can get if you want a device like this. And the same goes for the speakers, loud, clear, a really nice experience, stereo, can't say anything more. In terms of performance, you get core end performance. So you don't get ultrabook high end performance, but you get definitely something more than the usual tablet experience. I am totally fine. And if I wouldn't have to do more video editing, except of that, this device would give me more than the usual workflow performance I usually need. So I'm fine here. Battery life, heat and noise, noise as I said, Perfect, heat still very good, no issues at all. And battery life, yeah, maybe not the best. It is okay for four and a half hours, is solid. The charging time with three hours is not that great. So yeah, that's all I can say for that. In terms of software, absolutely stable, absolutely solid. Windows 8.1 with the whole tablet design works nice. Windows 10 will get it even further, so even better. Otherwise, in terms of the value, I can't really say it is the best value. It gives you a lot of versatility with all the other stuff, all the accessories you can get, but the competition is high. And this leads me to my recommendation part. Would I recommend it? And I can say you, I can't fully recommend it because the competition is just too big and you really have to look for what you want. If it gives you and you saw the review all you want, I can definitely recommend it. But you also have to consider all the competitors, competitors out there. There are a lot of devices and they are all different in all kinds of sorts. So maybe one gives you a little bit what you want that doesn't give you this and, uh, and vice versa. So check the market and if this is what you want, I can definitely say you don't 
do anything wrong with this device because it is overall very solid. Personally, it's not my first choice because if I work harder or do work for longer times, I am looking for something bigger. But if I would be in the market for a 10, 11 inch convertible, this would be in the closest range I would look for. So yeah, that's it for my review. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, reshare this video, subscribe to my channel, leave me any comments or anything else. I would really appreciate it. Yep. And a small little thing, please listen to my podcast I'm doing with Jamal the Boys. It would be really nice to get a little bit more viewers and listeners. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, bye. Until next time.